Uh, greetings, greetings, fellow great tens. It's Mr. Chacha again. Uh, look, we are back with some another amazing content. So what we are looking at today, uh, we are going to be looking at past papers. Uh, and then we are going to learn in terms of how can we solve our, you know, quantitative aspects of chemistry, right? Now, let's see. So uh, in this particular question, what is it that we are given? Basically, we are given that uh, we are having a group of learners, right? Uh, we're having a group of learners uh, that prepare a 0, 0.25 mole, dis, uh, mole per decimeter cube solution of your sodium carbonate, right? By uh, dissolving a 14.2 uh, gram sample of hydrated sodium carbonate uh, into 100 centimeter cubed of uh, your water, right? So that's basically what we are given. Right now, firstly, the first thing is determine what is hydrated. I think uh, most of us we are familiar with the word hydrated, right? So hydrated basically it is going to be uh surrounded by water molecules. And you know when they say uh probably uh, medically when they say you are dehydrated, which means you do not have uh water in your board right so which means in this case now when they say uh now what is going to be hydrated hydrated is going to be surrounded with water molecules right so hydrated uh it is uh as surrounded when you are surrounded uh by water molecules isn't it so so this is going to be uh your hydrated right uh molecules and then now let's look at uh, now your 7.2. Now they say, uh, write down a balanced chemical equation to show uh, how sodium carbonate dissolves in water, right? Uh, now, uh, what is it that we are going to do? Isn't it that uh, our formula for sodium carbonate is going to be given by what? Uh, you are going to say now, uh, remember your sodium carbonate in this case, it's going to be uh, this, it is your Na. It is your NaCO3, uh, I think. Uh, and then this is going to form what? And remember now, when this is dissolved, what will happen is basically you are going to have your sodium with your what? Uh, with your CO3. Uh, Isn't it so? This is what you are going to basically have. Uh, and now, and therefore, now in terms of us now trying to balance this because remember it's sodium uh carbonate which is formed uh now through your sodium mixing with uh your carbonate right now what is it then now that we are going to do to ensure that we are having this balance remember uh this is going to be your n uh your na2 right this is given as your na2 as you can see from here so now the first thing that you are going to do to balance this now we're going to check in terms of how uh how many uh, how many uh sodium uh basically sodium atoms do we have right so can you see here that we are having two and in this side we are having uh one right and look uh what is it that we are also having in here now here you are having your uh your carbon uh, and then your carbon here which means this is correct because you're having one one and you are having also your what uh, you are having your O3 this side and you're having your O3 this side, which means this one is also correct. Now, which means what is uh, rem remaining here? Look, here you are having two of them and here you are having one. So what you can do is you can write in a two in here, right? So when you write a two here, when you write a two here, hopefully you can see. So which means this is going to be balanced because you're going to have two of your Na2. Uh, and then also you're going to have two also atoms of your Na2. Then now this is going to be your balanced equation, right? Uh, hopefully this makes sense now. Now let's look at then our 7.3. Now they say, let us then take your, uh, your 10 centimeter cube prepared solution and allow it to react uh, completely with your 5 centimeter cube of your diluted or your dilute uh, hydrochloric acid according to the balance equation. So this is uh, uh, the balance equation that we are given, right? And then now let's see in terms of what does the question then require us to do. So the first thing they want us to define in terms of what is going to be a mole of a substance, right? I think we 
I uh, had this discussion before, and we know that now basically a mole it is the amount of a substance having the same number of particles as the atoms of your uh carbon 12, right? Or as the 12 grams of your carbon 12, right? So that is going to be your uh what your mole. And that is going to be a mole. So now let's see. So we are saying basically uh, a mole, or rather a mole, it is going to be, uh, it is going to be this, uh, the amount, this is going to be the amount uh, of substance, right? This is going to be your amount of substance having the same, uh, having the, uh, having the same amount, having the same, uh, having the same number of uh, particles having the same number uh, of your particles, having your same number of particles as the atoms of your carbon-12, as the atoms uh, of uh, your 12 grams or your 12 grams of carbon-12, right? This is going to be now, uh, this is how we are going to define your mole. And please, uh, fellow learners, make sure that you are in a good position that you can define what is going to be your mole, right? Now, let's look at now our 7.3.2. Uh, now, uh, they say uh, this one, what is going to be now the type of chemical reaction? Uh, what is going to be the type of chemical reaction uh, that is represented by the chemical equation above? Now, the type of reaction that is going to be represented here, can you see that now this is going to be what we call a gas-forming uh, reaction? Because if you can see in terms of what is going to be uh, formed here, now look, this is going to be your what? This is uh, your gas, right? So this can also now be uh, regarded as your gas-forming reaction, right? This is going to be your gas-forming. And now if you also... Now, do not want to say that this is also same as an acid, uh, acid base reaction, right? So this is also going to be same as your acid base type of reaction, right? So this is how you can then uh describe those uh this particular reaction. Now, uh, then uh let's look at now our seven point three point three. Now they say calculate the number of moles of hydrogen of hydrochloric acid in your five centimeter cube of your uh, hydrochloric acid if its uh, concentration is one mole per decimeter cube, right? Now, I want us to do this. I want us to do this here. Now, the first thing that we are going to uh, do here is, remember now, what is it that you are given? So firstly, what you are given, this is uh, acid, which is in five centimeter cube. And what do we know about this? So what we basically know about this, this is going to be your volume. So they are giving you what is going to be your volume of your hydrochloric acid. And they are also giving you the concentration, right? They are also giving you the concentration and they want you uh, to calculate what is going to be the number of moles. Now, let's see. Remember now, uh, we have this formula, which is concentration. Uh, now, we are looking for concentration of your HCl. So, your concentration is going to be N over your V, right? So, what is it that now we are going to say? Look, you have the concentration, which means this is your concentration you have, and you also have your volume. But now remember that our volume, it is never measured in centimeter cube, but rather it is measured in decimeter cube. So this is where we are going to start. Now, when we move from centimeter cubed to decimeter cube, what is it that now we do? Now we say now this is going to be five and this, the ratio is one is to a thousand, which means this is going to be five divide by a thousand. So now this is going to what? So this is going to be zero comma uh zero zero five decimeter what decimeter cubed, isn't it so? Then this is going to be your uh your answer or rather your response. And then uh what is it that you are going to do then from here? Then you will come back and substitute this. So let's start here. Are we given the concentration? Yes, we are given the concentration. So in a space for concentration, you write one here is going to be equals to now this is the uh the n uh your mole of your hcl remember the question require you to calculate the mole not the concentration uh now over now this is going to be what what is going to be the volume the volume it is given by what 
uh, it is given by 0, 0,005. Then now, what is it that now we are going to do from here? So which means, therefore, our mole of this, our mole of your 8CL, it is going to be given by 0, 0,005 uh, five, uh, mole, right? So this is going to be uh, the number of moles of your 8CL. Isn't it so? Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, now let's then look at your 7.3 and check in terms of what is it that we are given them. So in this question, they say they want you to calculate the mass of your sodium chloride formed in the reaction uh, in 7.3. Now let's look at this. So now they want us to calculate the what? Uh, the sodium chloride. Uh, your mass of your sodium chloride. And what is it that we can get from this name, sodium chloride? Remember, uh, your sodium chloride, it's same as your NaCl, which means it's what? It is this one, right? This is this uh, the sodium chloride within this particular reaction. Now, what is it that you are going to do? Since we are given nothing from your sodium chloride, uh, now, the and the only thing that you can get from the sodium chloride is we can only get the molar mass, right? The only thing that you can get it is the molar mass. What is important is, now, whenever you are given a reaction, right? Let me just clear this. Whenever now you are given a, a, your reaction, what you need to take note is that now, remember, since this is the balance reaction, right? So this is going to be, since this is going to be uh, your balance reaction, what you need to know is that now, if you can get, let's say now, one mole, one mole of anything, one mole of anything within this particular reaction, you can then be in a position that you use the ratio right you use the ratio of that particular mole in that particular reaction to calculate the mole of anything right now let me just give you an example of this one now uh remember we are looking for your sodium uh chloride right but now uh this is what this is your nacl now and the only mole that we have from this particular reaction it is the mole of what this is the mole of your uh, hydrochloric acid which means we have this one now, uh, we are going to take these two things. We say, look, uh, your HCl is to your two, uh, let's not write the ratio first. It is same as your what? Uh, it is same as your uh, now NaCl. So we are going to represent this uh, in terms of the ratio form. Now, and we say, what was the ratio of your uh, HCl first? If you can look at the ratio uh, of your HCl, can you see that here you are having two? right you are having two hcl which means this is going to be what this is going to be uh the ratio is two here and what is the ratio of your nacl right your ratio of your nacl it is equal to what now it is equal to two so what does this mean now if you are having the same uh ratio within the same particular reaction right what is it that that this is going to tell you we are saying now both of these now are uh, both of these compounds are therefore going to share or rather they are going to have the same number of modes right so now which means since their ratio is two is to uh two remember two is to two it's same as one is to one in this case right so since you had the uh the mole of your hcl and the mole of your hcl it was 0, 0,005 mole which means also the mole now of your uh uh the mole of your NACL i mean the mole of your NACL also uh, it is going to be same as 0, 0.05 uh mole which means basically since in this case we had the mole of your HCl which was this one now the mole of your HCl it is going to be the same as your mole of your NACL because these are within the same particular reaction right so they are going to form or they are going to have the same amount of mole right now hopefully this thing makes sense now so which means now you already now from this NACL now you have the mole of it which is this one that we got from the ratio then now what is it that now we can do and remember they want us to calculate mass and remember that look the mole it is given by the mass which we are required to calculate 
over your molar mass. And remember, your molar mass is your capital letter M, right? So which means now, if we are looking then for the mass of what if you are looking for your mass of your NaCl now that we have the mole we are going to say this uh the mass is going to be same as what it is going to be same as your mole multiplied by your molar mass right hopefully this makes sense so this is going to be same as now what is your mole your mole is given by uh 0, 0, uh 0, 0.005 mole multiplied by now what is the molar mass of your NACL. I know that you've forgotten now how to calculate that. Now, let's see. Let's go back now to our our periodic table. So if you check our periodic table, I think now your NA, it is given by 23, right? It is given by 23. And whereas now your CL, your CL, I think it is 35.5, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken. And now when you are adding this, uh, this is going to be same as your what? This is going to be your 58.5, right? And then which means this is going to be multiplied by 58.5 grams per mole. And remember that uh, now the uh, the unit for your molar mass is given by what? It is given by grams per mole, right? And therefore, which means the mass that is going to be... Uh, or the mass that you are going to have here, it is going to be zero comma what? This is going to be zero comma uh two nine grams, right? This is going to be zero comma two nine grams. So basically, this is the mass of NaCl that is going to be formed within this particular reaction. Now, hopefully, this makes sense.